Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. I'm joined by... Martin Halechko. I'm the co-founder of VR Engineers. Tell me a little bit about you guys, when you guys got set up, what do you guys do? Okay, so we are a virtual reality engineering company and we set out to create professional VR headset for people like designers or architects. We've been building this technology for about four years now and on the market we are since about a year. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your headset, what are the capabilities, what are the resolutions, right. why is it different to another VR yeah, headset? This headset, we, we call it VR Hero 5K, um, it's been built since the beginning with, let's say, two aims. One was the best visual quality you can get in VR and second what was with the professional user in mind basically so we never uh, aimed for the consumer or gaming industry we always were looking at the industrial usage or healthcare etc so uh, these were the two main let's say focus points when we were building VR Hero 5k and uh, what we've arrived to uh, build is a headset with a very wide field of view 170 degrees 5K uh, resolution, as I said, custom-built optics. It's super important. It's not only about the resolution, but it's a you know a chain of of things that have to go right to get such a clear image. Yeah, and uh, uh, a, a couple of other let's say characteristics that make it very usable for an enterprise user or a professional user. So like integrations into professional software tools, SDKs, etc., etc. Um, so I just tried it out, uh, or I just tried out the headset, and you also have some leap motion attached to this headset as right. well. Is that is that shipped with your normal headset, or is this something that's new? Right. Uh, actually, leap motion is one of our uh, important partners because we really find hand tracking very useful uh, to be in in a headset. Of course, um, the controllers are often useful too, but if you can do something with your bare hands, don't make it too complex. Yeah. So. Why not? Um, and um, since we've partnered with them, we have uh, access to all their technology that they are developing. And uh, what you've tried here is their next generation uh, uh, sensor. It's not on the market yet, so we don't sell it with that, but we use it for, for testing and for showing the capabilities that will be there. And actually, um, I mentioned before, we've partnered with them and we are working on a next generation of our headset, which will have this included, I mean, embedded directly in the headset. So not as an add-on module, but directly. Okay. In it. Do you, would, would that involve eye tracking as well in the <laughs> next generation headset? I mean, the leap motion is solely for the hand tracking mm -hmm. and actually will be the first uh, headset with hand tracking embedded in the world. And it has nothing to do with eye tracking. <laughs> but will you have eye tracking in, in potentially in the next headset as well? I can't disclose much more about the next headset, so I would leave it at that. Okay. One thing uh, that I can say is that we are working, of course, on the size and the, and the weight of the headset, because it's, it's actually uh, tricky when you want the widest field of view possible and the uh, highest resolution, you are ending up with larger displays and, and you know, broader, um, broader setup, broader frame. But actually what you want is to make the headset the smallest uh, possible. And the key is in, in, in real advanced optics. So we've been working on that uh, over the past few months. And, and uh, in the next uh, generation, we are uh, working on reducing also the size of, of the headset. What's the feedback so far, people who've tried it already uh, for their businesses? Mm -hmm. the, the people who've been in the field for a long time, yeah, the veterans of VR, they always say, oh, finally, finally it's getting there. Finally, there is no screen door effect. Finally, we can see, see clearly and see all the details. Yeah? But for the, for the users who actually use it or clients who buy that, it's, uh, there is a very uh, clear use case involved. And uh, uh, the most typical one is a designer, um, let's say in a car uh, manufacturer. And the, the reason is simple because if you are building something today and you can use virtual reality to see what you're building in a, in a totally true to life fashion, yeah? in a, in a, um, with the fidelity of how it will be when it's produced, it can save you a lot of time, a lot of money, you can try more things, you can be more creative, playful. So instead of building a clay model of your 
next BMW, you can do that in VR and you can make design decisions, you can make design approvals with your uh, superiors, etc. etc. So, so this is the most typical use case we see or we, we've been having so far and, and, and we have, we have uh, clients in this type of companies. Um, another uh, field which is very, let's say, prone to uh, jump on high resolution VR is uh, architecture, where again, you want to work with materials, with, with fine details, you want to be able to experience the space, and uh, 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 this is something that uh, uh, we, can, we can provide. And let's say a third, um, uh, third uh, area would be simulations, where you want to simulate a situation in a very true-to-life uh, way again. So it could be uh, uh, driving a large ship, it could be flying a plane. Um, and there the reason uh, why, why this is, uh, let's say, a superior experience to the normal consumer headset is because with the wide field of view, you, you can act naturally. You see if something is coming into your peripheral vision and you don't have to you know, turn your head all the time. And the second uh, pretty uh, uh, obvious thing is that you can actually read the dashboard. You, can, you, don't, you don't have to you know, go like that to be able to see what's going on. So you can basically act naturally and, and um, yeah, take advantage of VR in any situation when it's too dangerous or too expensive to, to train for or to simulate in, in real life. Wow, okay, so there's a lot of different use cases for yeah. it. Uh, you mentioned that you're working on a new headset. Roughly, is there like a rough timeline for when that might be coming I, out? I would say this year. This year. This okay. year. It's coming this year. Coming and, this uh, year. End of this year. Or? <laughs> yeah, a bit faster than that. A little bit faster. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I look forward to seeing uh -huh. that. Uh, is there a website that we can go to to find out more? Yeah. Um, it's our name, of course, VR Engineers, and there uh, you can find anything. Uh, about the headset, about us. You can also uh, let us know if you have a project. We are very open to uh, consulting and talking about uh, projects because we are basically it, it's, a, it's the birth of this enterprise VR field and we are like so uh, passionate about it. So we really always uh, are open to, to talk about any kind of project that people have in mind because it's also um, um, it's also from the client side at, at the very beginning and uh, it's, it's good to put the, their knowledge and our knowledge together. From the beginning, the, yeah. yeah. Okay, well thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Head over to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more about virtual reality and I will see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you.